I'm a 61 year old male and my health has only worsened. Sadly, I've been struggling with Parkinson's disease, a brain disorder that causes unintended or uncontrollable movements such as shaking, stiffness, and speech deficiencies. But to add insult to injury, I couldn't sleep at night because of all the noises outside the house. I'd occasionally hear couples cursing each other, my neighbor's dogs barking, the loud engine of dump trucks, and cars honking like the drivers were always desperate to get home soon. But worse than that, someone would bang on my door from time to time, waking me up in the middle of the night. <gasps> I usually brushed off the matter assuming it was just a bunch of kids playing ding dong ditch. If this was an idea of a bad joke, I didn't like it. However, I didn't have the strength or capacity to get out of bed and reprimand whoever was doing it. So, as a result, I'd suffer from insomnia, leading me to believe that my lifespan would be far shorter than I had hoped. But since I still wanted to live longer, I alerted my loved ones, especially my niece, who often cared for me despite her hectic schedule at work. So, worried it might be more than just a prank, she decided to have a ring camera installed at my front door. At first, I told her that I didn't have anything valuable enough for robbers to be interested in, but then she told me that she was concerned about my well-being and that I should take this more seriously. She explained that installing a ring camera would help us uncover the source of the noise. Then, she reminded me that I wasn't getting any younger and that I needed additional protection, especially when she wasn't around. So, instead of justifying myself, I took her offer, since she had a point anyway. However, following the camera's installment was a series of events that only made things worse for me, turning the next two years of my life into a living hell. Whenever we checked the camera, the footage would reveal an old man a few years younger than me, tampering with the device. But what made the revelation all the more shocking was how the man was my next door neighbor. He would constantly lurk outside of my front door at any given time, keeping me restless. I wasn't sure if he was trying to break in, or if he had nothing else better to do with his time. I didn't know how much of this harassment I could take, especially after seeing how he constantly fidgeted with the ring camera, but nonetheless, I was still curious. I wanted to know what his true intentions were. However, my niece strongly advised against it, so momentarily, I wondered if he was the same guy who had been banging on my door late at night, back when the cameras weren't installed. During one of the nights, I remember seeing this creep use a black sharpie to draw on the camera. It seemed like he was desperate to cover the lens but failed to do so. I could see the irritation on his face, giving me the feeling that he wasn't going to stop there. Then, in another scenario, the creep repeatedly hit the camera with a screwdriver, determined to remove it from its current position. Naturally, my niece and I were alarmed. So, without a second thought, she called the cops, reporting that a crazy man was messing with our ring camera. Then eventually, we filed a restraining order, hoping to keep this guy away from me. But none of the actions we took were able to stop him. He would constantly harass me, vandalizing my property. After that, he became more creative and aggressive. There was an instant where he would relentlessly hit the camera with the broom, constantly thrusting the wooden handle into the lens, hoping he could smash it. And when that didn't satisfy him, he finally got a hammer to strike it down. First, he stared into the camera like he was looking straight at me. Then, moments later, he smiled like the devil himself and repeatedly hit the camera until it was removed, going offline moments later. But to be honest, it was his blatant stares that kept me on edge. He'd display his gaunt face without a tinge of reluctance, remaining silent and manic for hours upon end. I couldn't make out what he was thinking, and occasionally, my niece would talk to me about moving to the countryside with our other relatives, but I didn't want to cause trouble for anyone, so I respectfully declined. Then reluctantly, my niece brought me another ring camera, reminding me to keep an eye out for the lunatic who destroyed the other one. But as soon as the new camera was installed, it was only a matter of time before my deranged neighbor would show up again. One night, around 3 in the morning, I could hear thuds coming from my door. It sounded like my neighbor was up to no good again. I then opened the ring camera app on my phone and saw one of the most disturbing sights I have ever seen. I could see my neighbor run face first like some unhinged psycho. It was like he was possessed, displaying zero emotion on his face as he slammed into my door.
I remember cowering in my bed until the banging stopped, hoping the silent treatment would eventually persuade him to stop. After hours of constant banging, he would eventually stop. I then alerted my niece about the occurrence and even provided the ring camera footage which she provided to the police. Days later, the creep was finally apprehended. When the cops investigated his house, they discovered a room where he had binoculars next to the window. The authorities speculated he had been observing me for a long time, but that wasn't the only thing they found that was strange because in the next room they found a dozen photos of me scattered across the table with my face colored in black as if he was trying to erase them with his black sharpie when the cops asked me more about the creep I could only tell them that he was my neighbor and nothing more. Whatever that man's intentions were remained a mystery. And since then, my niece has added ring cameras in and out of the house, hoping there wouldn't be another crazy person watching me from afar. <gasps> This story was inspired by one of the most horrific brain camera cases on the internet. A 61-year-old man named Stephen Persaud and his then 39-year-old niece Victoria have been dealing with a long string of harassment from their 59-year-old neighbor Stephen Groves. During the events, Groves can be seen scribbling Black Sharpie on Prasad's ring camera, and there were even times where Groves can be seen hacking at the camera with a screwdriver. But the most chilling video of all was when he could be seen hacking at the camera with a hammer. No matter what restraining order or electronic tag the law has handed to Groves, it hasn't stopped him from further harassing Prasad and his niece. This happened several years ago, when I was still in high school. It was during summer vacation, in the middle of July. My parents were celebrating their 20th anniversary, so they left me alone in the house for a week while they went on a retreat to some secluded place hours away. I was an only child, so I was used to house sitting. It wasn't like I was worried about it though. I knew not to answer the door for strangers and we had plenty of food. Plus my parents had a ring doorbell, which meant we had a camera at the front of the house just in case. I was actually kind of annoyed at the presence of that thing because it meant my parents could easily find out if I brought anybody over without permission. Unfortunately, that meant no parties. But honestly, after the 4th of July weekend, I was done with partying for a while. I looked forward to kicking back, relaxing, and doing nothing for a whole week. The first three days at the house were uneventful. All I did was eat, sleep, watch TV, and play video games with my friends online. However, the nights got weird. I had a lot of trouble sleeping. I would toss and turn until sunrise before I finally slept. But whenever it was dark, I was squirming with anxiety. I kept hearing things, like tapping or knocking sounds. I couldn't tell where they were coming from, but I was too freaked out to find out, and not dumb enough to get out of the bed in the middle of the night to go looking for trouble. I tried to ignore it by wearing headphones or playing the TV. Of course, by the third night in a row of it happening, I was starting to get annoyed. On the fourth night, though, this inconvenience morphed into something much worse. I was in the living room watching TV, and the whole day that led up to this moment, nothing made it seem like anything unusual was about to happen. But then, at one o'clock in the morning, the ring camera bell rang. A chill went through me. I was already on edge from what was going on the previous nights, but now there was really somebody at the door. I immediately muted the TV and sat almost completely frozen except for my own pounding heartbeat. I swore to myself that I had to be hearing things, but then it rang again. Panicking, I jumped up and turned off the lights in the TV, but right away I realized the mistake I made. Turning everything off and trying to hide in the silent darkness was no use. Whoever was out there would have definitely heard the TV go silent and clearly see the lights go off, making it obvious that I was inside. I kept thinking over and over again like a crazy person. Why is there someone at my door at 1 a.m.? Who rings the doorbell at 1 a.m.? That's when I finally thought to check the ring camera through my phone. And what I saw was the most bone-chilling thing I've ever witnessed. There was a psycho at my door dressed as Ronald McDonald the Clown. He was looking straight into the camera. The sight of it alone petrified me. I didn't know whether I should answer him through the doorbell or just call the cops right then and there. But all I ended up doing was watching as he rang the bell again and again and again. He just kept smiling while tilting his head to the side, waving creepily. I couldn't take being on the same level as him anymore. 
So I bolted upstairs to my bedroom and locked the door. I sat there in the dark, watching him on my phone and hoping to God that he would just leave. But he didn't. He did the opposite. He started talking to me. I know you're in there. I can hear you. I saw you. I can even almost smell you. <laughs> you're in there. Somewhere. And you're all alone, aren't you? Just kidding. I know you are. <laughs> the sound of his voice petrified me. I had no idea who he was or what he wanted with me. I was scared out of my mind. I'm sorry, are you hard of hearing? I said open the door, dipshit! I was so afraid that I started to cry. I crawled onto the floor of my closet and hid there as the clown continued to torment me. That's when he took his hands out from behind his back and flashed a huge machete in front of the camera. I know you can hear me, you spoiled little brat! Just open the door and I'll give you a free Big Mac. What do you say, kid? Just open the door. Or I'll have to open it myself! I knew by then that this man was completely psychotic. Suddenly, he raised the machete into the air and pounded it against the door. I heard that awful thud ring out through the entire house, but it wasn't just one. Once he got started, it was like he really couldn't stop himself. I could see the splinters flying off the door onto his face. He was making his way through and it wouldn't be long. I cursed myself for not calling the cops earlier as I knew the clown would already be inside. I then forced myself to go to my window and open it up while screaming for help at the top of my lungs saying, Help! Somebody! Someone's breaking into my house! Help! I screamed until I was completely out of breath. Then I checked my phone to see if the clown was still at the door, but he wasn't. There was just a pile of wood chips left in the foyer. Another chill went through me as I realized he could have left, or he could have made his way in. I hid in the closet again and called my parents to tell them what was happening. They started making their way home and notified the police immediately. They told me not to make a sound until the police arrived. All I could do was spend the last several minutes in an absolute hell, just waiting in isolation and total fear. The cops eventually came before long and did their investigation, only to find out that my attacker had fled as soon as I started screaming. The worst part of it was when we checked the ring doorbell footage from the previous three days. We saw that he was there every single night, taunting with the machete, just smiling and waving like a psycho. But what makes this even more disturbing was how I now knew he was the one making the sounds at night. I just don't understand why he did it, and unfortunately, he's never been found. This story was inspired by a disturbing ring camera video of a man wearing a clown mask while menacingly tormenting someone's home. What makes the footage more unsettling was how the clown had a machete on hand and would tap the owner's camera with it during the middle of the night. The clown has since been at large and unidentified. I've always been interested in dogs since I was a little girl, so now that I was much older, I decided to get three canines who could keep my parents and I company, guarding the house when we were away. They'd stay in the backyard where they had ample space to roam around and exercise their legs. It also meant that I didn't have to worry about furniture damage and getting them potty trained. The dogs have always been active and loud, so when we moved in next to my neighbor, who happened to be an old guy with a temper problem, I was a bit worried I'd receive complaints occasionally, but it couldn't be helped. The old man didn't have a tinge of reluctance in his body as he always bothered me and my parents. He'd rant non-stop, threatening to take his complaints to the authorities if we didn't comply. But there wasn't anything we could do about their barking. They're dogs, after all. It's in their nature to bark. So, who was I to stop them from being themselves? He'd often holler about how the dogs ended up on his property, pooping all over the place and messing things up. But I always gave him the cold shoulder, convinced that a frail, deranged man like him could do us no harm. 
To be honest, he didn't have many friends in our neighborhood. Actually, I don't think he made any friends at all because of how rude he was to everybody. On some days, I'd wake up to his loud voice, followed by an ambulance of remarks that would leave my other neighbors disturbed. It's a bit strange though, because no matter how many times he reported to the cops, he would constantly be ignored by them. Then, one night, my dogs barked again like they usually did. I was personally used to the sounds, but I knew it was probably irritating the old man. Then around five minutes later, I could hear footsteps approaching my house. The footsteps then transferred onto the porch. You'll regret this! You won't always be around to protect those pests, you stupid little nut licker! The crazed man stomped his feet on our porch, banging on the door and making threats over and over again. This went on every night. Every time my dogs made noise, he woke us up in the wee hours of the morning, unaccountable for the disturbance he was causing my parents and I. My parents were old, unable to stay up late like they used to, and I needed to go to work when the sun was up. But the old man did didn't care about any of that. By the time I got out of bed, stepped onto the porch to confront the man, he would always walk back to his home, leaving me worried about me and my parents' safety. And during the day when I saw him on his porch, I would make it known that I wasn't pleased with his antics and that I would alert the authorities if he didn't stop. The man always seemed unfazed as if he thought I was bluffing. He would just grunt and murmur things I couldn't quite understand and head back inside his house. My gut feeling told me that he was up to no good, but I didn't trust my instincts. So alternatively, I shrugged it off and pushed through with my plans for the weekend. One day, I visited my relatives in New Jersey along with my parents, leaving the dogs behind. I was at peace knowing that one of my kinder neighbors volunteered to feed the dogs and monitor them whenever they had spare time. However, during the days that followed, I received a call from her, telling me that the dogs were behaving in an odd manner. They didn't play ball like they used to and stopped barking as much as they usually did. It was the summer at that time, so I assumed they could have been affected by the heat. When I asked her what she fed them, I found nothing wrong with her reply since she gave them food and water according to my list. So, with overwhelming anxiety, I persuaded my parents to return home earlier than we initially intended. We packed our stuff, and once we arrived home, it was easy to see that our dogs had fallen ill. They laid flat on the ground, their ears droopy with their eyes reddish. One seemed to be gasping for breath while the other drooled incessantly. My body trembled, knowing this was out of the ordinary and that their lives were now in danger. I couldn't help but draw the conclusion that my neighbor had to be the one responsible for this. My parents and I checked the ring camera, convinced it would be the best way to check any possible leads in the surveillance system. And as soon as we did, my heart sank. Filling my body with rage With our eyes glued to the phone screen The ring camera revealed the old man from next door Throwing something from a plastic bag onto our yard The man was feeding our dogs But I couldn't tell if it was actually dog food or not Of course, I didn't think twice and called the cops As I didn't give him permission to do such a thing The police then arrested the man and took him into custody We immediately brought them to the vet and had them checked and what was discovered sent chills down our spines. The doctor mentioned that they had found traces of rat poison in their system, and that if they weren't admitted on the day we arrived home, they would have died in two days. But my parents and I were left more disturbed when we reviewed the ring camera footage further, only to see the man walking by our house every other day, throwing tainted meat from a plastic bag onto our yard, just so the dogs could ingest it. Since then, I no longer saw my neighbor again after that incident, and fortunately, my dogs were saved, but I was so traumatized that I would keep the dogs inside the house, constantly looking for potential threats around the neighborhood. On February 6 of 2023 at around 5 p.m., a couple caught their neighbor on their ring camera throwing meat laced with rat poison into their yard. Luckily, the couple and their three dogs were visiting family in New Jersey at the time of the incident. The man then left a chilling written note apologizing for his actions, alluding that he did what he did because of the dog's constant loud barking. The man has since been charged and is facing the possibility of being sentenced up to a year in jail. 